intrahepatic aneurysmal portosystemic venous shunt diagnosed on EOS. The patient was a 76-year-old female who presented to an outside hospital for evaluation of headache. She had a past history of diabetes mellitus and arterial hypertension. The patient did not have a past history of liver disorder. She did not have any symptom or sign of liver disorder. ESR was 58 and liver enzymes were normal. Abdominal CT scan reported an enhancing mass lesion in the left lobe of the liver. The patient was referred for EOS for more evaluation of the lesion. With the scope in the proximal stomach and in the open angle position, the left lobe of the liver is identified. You can see here the left hepatic vein entering suprahepatic IBC. The left hepatic vein is seen again. Here, you see the left hepatic vein communicating to the left portal vein through an aneurysmal communicating vessel. Here you see the left branch of portal vein. Now, the left branch of portal vein is seen to enter the main portal vein by a clockwise rotation of the scope. Now, the blood flow is observed in the aneurysmal communicating vessel. Here, the ligamentum venosum is seen attaching to the left branch of portal vein in the left side of the screen and to the inferior vena cava in the right side of the screen. Portal vein carries blood from the GI tract to the liver and hepatic veins drain blood from the liver to the inferior vena cava. Portosystemic shunts could be intrahepatic or extrahepatic. Intrahepatic shunts are abnormal intrahepatic connections between branches of the portal vein and the hepatic veins or IVC. In the extrahepatic shunts, the portomesentric blood drains into a systemic vein by passing the liver through a shunt. The extrahepatic shunts could be congenital or acquired. Extrahepatic portosystemic venous shunts are commonly seen in portal hypertension. As an example, esophageal varices communicate left gastric vein to azygous vein. Also, gastric fundal varices communicate short gastric vein and posterior gastric vein from the portal venous circulation to the inferior phrenic vein in the caval circulation. Intrahepatic venous shunts are classified into four types according to part classification. Our case represents a type 3 shunt which is an aneurysmal communication between hepatic veins to portal veins.
ductus venosus connects the left umbilical vein to IVC during fetal life. It closes after birth and is called as ligamentum venosum. It may remain patent after birth and is considered as type 5 intrahepatic venous shunt by some experts. In conclusion, ERES can diagnose hepatic vascular anomalies, especially in the left lobe of the liver. Endosonographers need to be familiar with the liver anatomy and its vascular structures during ERES examination to avoid unnecessary or even harmful diagnostic interventions.